All right, final video, video number 15, uh, which is going to be on tips for drawings. If you've stuck around this far, we've gone through a ton of material. You've gone through some drawings and created some of your own. I'm just going to show you now some of my shapes and some of the little things that over the years I've developed that make my life in drawing much easier. Not long, honestly, just a couple of last minute tricks that wasn't really or that didn't really have a place where I could classify them in the earlier videos. So we'll run through that really quick and then uh, you're on your own after that. Let's find our Visio. All right, so Microsoft Visio is open here on my computer right now. I've got a blank page. A couple of things that I wanted to show you that have been really useful for me. First of all, I'm going to show you my blocks, my connectors and nipples blocks over here. So we've got some pipe nipples, offset nipples. We have got some rigid pipe nipples with bushings on them. And then I've got a number of cable conductors that are going to be inside of here or EMT conductors. Most of them are built off of similar looking devices. If you take a look at them, you see that they're lock nut are all similar, that you, all the thread patterns are all similar. In a lot of cases, I'm just breaking apart and modifying other old components to go and create these. What I did want to talk about on my connectors, though, is the number of connection points that you're going to go and drop on them. I'm just going to go and highlight my connection point tool. And when I do that, what you should see, actually, no, I'll go to my connector tool. When I hover over top, you see that coming out of the back end of each one, I leave myself one connection point so that I'll be able to go and make any sort of cable go around and through and then coming out of this end over here i will have as many connection points as i can laid out onto the end of the component so that honestly if i got to go and do splice throughs or you know boxes or anything like that it allows me to just snap directly off of here there is an alternative method which is going to be using your cable ends. So I'm just going to go to my wire ends. Mine's called labeled connectables, wires and boxes. And my connectables ends, I've got all of these, you know, my red, white, black, my four conductors. Sometimes they're going to be with bonds, sometimes without a bond. What I'll do on some drawings is I'll take this thing. We'll just go and give it a quick horizontal flip over there and then place it like that. And then just bring this one out to the front so that you've got everything labeled. So oftentimes if I'm going to have a drawing that the students need to go and solve, that's not going to be presented in color in class, I'll give them something like this where they're going to work off. We'll just delete that little connector that showed up there. But if I'm creating anything that's inside of switch gear, perhaps, you know, that I've got an open switch or disconnector panel, then I'll just draw my own lines from here. And because I sometimes am not using the fans, just depending upon what the sampler is that I'm looking at, I'll bring it, or depending on what I'm looking at, I'll bring in this shape over here. This shape is just called a sampler. Literally, it is just a bunch of wires with my standard gauges that I'm using, one and a half for my bonds, four and a half for my white, and then three for these with all of my regular three mil. And what this allows me to do is just apply formatting quickly. So if I've created something over here, so we've got cable to cable. I know it's you know not true to life the way electrical is. I can just click on this and then I can hit my format painter, pick up that look that I have over there, bring that over, and then I can go and find another conductor. I don't know, we'll take this white over here, hit my format painter, use that to drop on there. Let's pick a blue conductor over here, hit my format painter and use that to go and do this over here. So then I've got all of my rounding right away done, ready to go on my components. And when I'm finished doing my drawing, I can then just delete that as a whole. It's just brought in, so I've got a place to quickly pick stuff out. It's almost like having a palette on there. You can use it for, oh, sorry, that's a wrong diagram there. Do we have one? Uh, that's a bunch of components, a bunch of components. I don't know if I've got a diagram right now that's open that shows a bunch of components that are utilized. Yeah. We don't have anything open with that. I was going to show you something otherwise on another page, but I think I've deleted that one already. To be honest, it's blurring all together, all these videos. So that's one of them, is that on every single connector, EMT, PVC, whatever you are going to go and draw out, make sure you draw it out in such a way that you've got all of these little connection points active off of it.
that's one of them. The other one that I'm going to talk about real quick is the offset uh, tool when creating piping. I know we can use this to go and create, you know, kind of a pipe looking thing that you can drag around on your drawings. But if you wanted to go and create, you know, physical piping or you've got, um, I don't know, process that needs to be done with that, we've got this other lovely tool and we'll just walk through it really, really quick how to create a set of piping. I'm going to draw this like it was actual plumbing piping, okay? So I'm going to click and I'm releasing and re-clicking on each one as I'm going through. So take that one over there. We'll take this one over here, down to there. And we'll go over to there with it. So now we've got this other, we basically got two almost like a Z looking components that are superimposed over top of each other. I've aligned their bottoms over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this whole thing and I want to convert this into pipe. I'll take this one till it's even there and that one there. So I'm going to take all of this right now. I'm going to go to my corner rounding. I'm going to go and place a massive round onto it. Okay, the largest rounding that I have. You see how this one here didn't round? The reason for that is that those lines were not connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this line and this line. I'm going to hit join. And then when I hit corner rounding, now it'll round out all the way through it. Just because it wasn't joined before, it couldn't do that. And as you go up, you can see that that rounding, it has to compact as it gets down into corners, right? Okay, so we've got this. Now we're going to try and lay this out as an actual pipe component. So I'm going to grab all of these right now, and I'm going to roll to my offset tool. And then inside of my offset tool, I'm going to go and set an offset. Let's call it 2 mil. Oops, sorry, that's 20. 2 mil over here. And once I've done that, we see that we get this line that goes off over here. Okay, it's almost to the point where we've got pipe, but there's still one more trick to it. Take a line and either slash through a little bit in from the end or directly on the end. You want to just make sure that whatever it is, it's watertight. This would not be considered to be watertight. Like uh, you got to imagine color could flow out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that one. I'm going to close this one off over here. And I'm going to roll over to the other end over here. I'm going to close that one off. And at this point, I see that every single line that's inside of here has got, you know, some sort of crossing where the lines are going over top. What we'll do is we'll grab this thing and we're going to use a fragment. And when we do a fragment, it's going to go and look for watertight shapes and break them out. So I hit fragment. We lost part of the end over there. That's all right. We can get that part of the end there later on. I'm not too concerned. It still looks the same because there was no fill in here before. But if I do a fill, I'll go pick a gray fill here, you can see that all of a sudden we do have fill that's happening inside of here. I'm going to do now a union. And when I do a union, don't worry about this little part down here. Sometimes Visio loses a shape uh, and it's honestly, it's a Visio problem, not a U problem, but we got ways around it. When I do that union, we see that now all of those have melded together. And then if I want to go and lay out just the rest of the pipeline over here, I'll just go over to there, go over to there. And then you can go and do one more across there. So now I've got, once again, a watertight shape because it starts on a line in here. It has to be watertight. It has to be making connection with a line or crossing over a line. Goes here, makes connection or crosses. Goes to here, makes connection or crosses. And then we'll take this whole thing one more time. And we will do one more fragment. And now we can see that it recognized that as being watertight. And we're just going to say, yep, that's good. We'll just grab all of this one more time here over top. And we will go and do a union. And what we have now done is we have created, you know, what looks like a plumbing stack there, right? We've got the Y's where we can see that there's flow going through in those directions, but we did it really simply by basically starting with just simple lines that lay our center line out, putting any curves that we wanted onto them. And then after we had put the curves onto them, then doing the offset. If you do it the other way, and I'll just show you on one right down here. And the other way would be that if I would go and do my offsetting first and then my curving, it will look odd. Okay, we'll just do a offset over here. Two mil, so same as the other one. Everything is still square. We'll take that. We will take this over here. We'll take the whole thing now, fragment it all looking for watertight shapes. It's found them all, we'll grab them all, we'll unionize them. And then what I can do is I can go and apply this corner rounding. Now, a couple things happen. First of all, see how these things kind of are like tumorous 
40 looking corners, they're, they're ugly, right? Because what's happened is it's applied the exact same curve on the inside as what it has on the outside. And so you end up with these funky looking corners that just, yeah, they're ugly. Okay, I don't like them. Maybe you like them, but I don't like them. You also see that the ends over here round off. And what you'd have to do if you wanted to square the ends is you'd have to go and like cut the ends off with a set of connectors here. We'll just do that really quick. And we'll fragment one more time. And then we can delete you know, those little bits that we're going to go and cut off. But what you see out of it is that using that corner rounding resulted in these really weird goosenecky type of corners. So don't do that. If you're going to do any rounding, do all your rounding beforehand and then do an offset. And if you look at this corner compared to that corner, I mean, it's just a world of difference for the evenness, right? We have the exact same evenness all the way through that compared to the other. Okay, I think that that was really my last couple of tricks that I had to go and lay out inside of here. Just remember your distribution tools, your alignment and distribution tools, they're going to be really handy for doing some components like creating uh, threads. You know, if you need to form a simplified thread the way that I've got on, oh, where is that here? We'll go to blocks, connectors, and nipples. We'll take in a liquid type connector over here. If you take a look at threads, threads are nothing more than a bunch of lines, one line copied and pasted across and then evenly distributed by your computer across there. Other than that, let me just think, because this is this is going to be it. I'm not making more videos after this. You're on your own you here. But uh, other than that, I don't think I have any more trick tricks to go and lay out for you. Yeah, that pretty much does it. Okay, that's it. We are done this series. Best of luck. Cheers.